What's going on guys? You've been asking for an EDC update, so I figured I'd give you one. Just got home from work. It's been a long day, but stay tuned. Video's coming next. Now we can get started. So EDC, everyday carry, that's the things that we take with us on an everyday basis. Uh, everybody has an EDC, whether you're into the gun thing, the knife thing or not. Uh, your cell phone, purse if you're a woman, or if you're a dude these days, you know, Antifa, it's 2021, we can't judge you, it's a hate crime, but either way, cell phone, keys to the house, to the car, Maybe a, a pen or a pencil, your checkbook, your purse, your wallet, whatever. That's your EDC. These are the things that we take with us every single day of our lives. They're tools. They're a means of transportation. They're whatever it may be. It's something that we use every single day. And that's where the whole EDC thing comes from. It's not a shitty music festival in the middle of nowhere. It's the tools and the, the, the weapons, which I don't like calling that because I am the weapon. You are the weapon. We are the weapon. The things that we carry on our person are merely the tools. Although there's a lot of you out there that are also tools. So first thing in the EDC, right? The beard. Totally, 110% EDC the beard every single day. No days off. Um, and that's real talk, big facts, no cap, I guess. But speaking of caps, Freedom Fatigues, check them out. Link in the description box below. All proceeds go to charity for first responders, um, law enforcement and veterans okay it's an awesome awesome cause they make awesome apparel shirts hats hoodies all the good stuff beard care products which i definitely need some more of I was getting a little uh getting a little bird nesty but either way either way i don't care it's looking good oh yeah it's gonna be a 20 minute video of me playing with my beard all right anyway ball cap this is part of an edc um the ball cap is, is a very underestimated thing, okay? For one, keeps the sun out of your eyes. Two, in case you're having a bad hair day. Three, in case you're having a no hair day. Those typically last longer than the bad hair days. Four, it's actually a defensive thing, and I picked up on this from watching the Doug Markaita video, um, where it's a, it's a weapon, it's an extra thing, okay? So if, I, if you were accosting me and you know, whatever, hey, I don't want any problems, take the hat off, throw it in their face. It's not going to hurt them. It's not going to disorient them in a sense of, you know, they're going to be like they just got hit with a flashbang, but it does reset their OODA loop. It's something they're not expecting. And even though it's not dangerous, they could sit here and I could chuck this hat in their face as hard as I possibly can. And the grand scheme of things, it's really not going to hurt them. But you know what it's going to do? It's going to distract them. They're going to instantly go to block it or move out of the way. That gives me time to move off the X. Been watching too many James Yeager videos in the early 2000s and do what I got to do or get out of there. You win 100% of the fights that you don't get into. So, you know, whatever. Plus, it's cool. I like supporting different companies. I like letting people know that I'm an American and I love America. And uh, shout out to Freedom Fatigues. Again, link in the description box below. It is under, you got to click the link tree. That will take you to a separate page that shows all of my affiliate links. And uh, they're one of the first ones. They're after the first three, um, I believe, or they're the second or whatever it is. But they're up there because uh, it's an important thing. They're definitely before anything that I get as far as profit. So uh, definitely check them out. They make awesome stuff. They're awesome people over there, veteran owned and operated. So uh, quality company for sure. And again, I get not a cent for it. I don't get nothing, not a red cent. So anyway, hat, sunglasses. Okay, sunglasses for one, the sun. Same thing with the hat, okay? People are, there's, you know, it's funny. You see people, kids going like this while they got a ball cap on, but it's backwards. Cause oh, I'm looking cool, but you're not that's not what it's for so <laughs> either way sun gets sunny out coincidentally every single day every single day the sun comes out at least for now um <laughs> so this comes in handy driving walking down the street whatever also i work in a gun range 
and I'm a shooter. I shoot all the time. So having ballistic rated eye protection or just any eye protection, honestly, even if you just wear glasses, normal glasses, that is something shielding your eyes. It is definitely better to have ballistic rated stuff. These are Edge Tactical Eyewear. Uh, they sponsor Team Terribly Tactical for the shooting competitions and stuff like that. For the money all day long, these blow Oakleys out of the water. Um, they're awesome. They're fog proof. Super durable. Uh, I actually, if you guys can see, I actually took the, the glasses did their job because I took some spray back from uh, a Rossi revolver that was out of time and it protected my eye, it put a little scuff on the glasses, but other than that, and uh, they're comfortable and they work. So it, easy, easy thing, right? Easy thing, but you're going shooting, whatever, boom, you always got some type of eye pro. Um, it, it's a good thing. You're doing a job, you're doing whatever. Um, you know, a lot of people are cutting the grass. They don't wear hearing protection. A lot of people, when they're running a saw, they don't wear eye protection. You know, I get it. I do that same stuff too, but at the same time, boop, right there. Now I'm protected. Now I can see. Now, you know, snow, wintertime, okay? Sun or snow blindness is a serious thing. I look like such a douche right now. But... Follow my Patreon. Um... <laughs> I don't even think I have a Patreon anymore. I don't know. I actually, I think I do, but I don't know if I know the login to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, sunglasses, simple, easy thing. We probably all got them in the purse, in the car, in a backpack, whatever, but they come in handy. I usually keep mine on the head because boom, somebody's got a, a jam on the range. I got to go help fix. Okay. Eyes and ears. Boom. Good. Because a lot of people don't think about it, but ricochets, uh, lead splatter, hot brass, whatever, like your eyes, you only have two of them, right? And they're kind of how we interact with the world around us, unless you're daredevil, which you're not. So you want to protect those. It's, oh, you're a pussy, safety Sally, but I'm going to be able to see your dumb ass and then take care of your dumb ass because um, I got these guys. And these these are sharp. These are diamond, diamond edge sharp. So anyway, that's the first two things. Uh, paracord bracelet, as douchey as it is, okay, for one, cordage, cordage, I'm a big prepper survivalist, cordage is a super important thing, and uh, it, it can get a lot of jobs done with just paracord, this is actual paracord, then on top of it, this used to have a compass, but the compass broke, and now it's just a needle sticking out, I could like test my diabetes with that or whatever, it's also a whistle, <whistles> loud, get attention that's going to carry a lot further than your voice and then inside there's also a ferro striker so i could get a fire started i have started fires using that before it is possible it's not the most efficient thing but you know what it's on my wrist i don't feel it i don't see it it doesn't take up any extra bulk or weight and god forbid i need it boom it's here so this is not a fashion statement this is a tool uh multi-use G-Shock, standard issue for a douchey gun guy. Uh, I just like them because they're durable and it tells the time. Oh, look, it's a watch. What time is it? Boom. It's that time. Anyway, so now we're going to take it downstairs. So uh, get the kids out of the room. Husbands, you know, you might want to get your wives out of the room too. I don't know. I don't know. That's up to you. I don't want anybody getting jealous. But uh, this is the awkward part where you stare at my crotchal region area for the next several minutes while I show you how I have things set up. And then maybe we'll bring it back up top to finish it off. But that sounds really bad. Stay tuned. Yikes. I don't know why you guys subscribe, honestly. But I appreciate it. All right, so boom, we are here. We're at the waistline. And uh, you really can't see, it's not the best angle. I don't know how to film this properly without it, without having a cameraman. And it would be even more awkward if Scales was over here videoing my junk. But either way, <laughs> we'll try and make it happen. So first of all, LA Police Gear shorts and or pants, typically, unless I'm wearing blue jeans. Uh, rip stop, quick dry, anti-stain, tons of pockets and organization. It's perfect for you know, daily use, daily wear, anywhere up to, you know, law enforcement, military style, Minuteman militia applications. They hold up, they're affordable, bunch of different colors, and uh, I love them. And I don't get a penny from them. I do have an affiliate code or a link to LA Police Gear. Check them out. It's in the uh, link tree. They make awesome stuff. Their own branded stuff while it's made overseas. It's, it's a really good value. But either way, that aside, that's typically what I'm wearing because it does help me organize everything. So left pocket in the front, they got these little slip pockets. Boom. 
Streamlight MicroStream. All right, so this is a little tiny pocket EDC style flashlight. You can wear it in the pocket or you could wear it through like the brim of a hat. See if I can't figure that out here for you real quick. So boom, impromptu headlamp. Look at that, boom, efficiency. It's actually pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this is a few hundred lumens or something like that, two, three hundred lumens. It is micro USB rechargeable, which is nice. It's light. It doesn't take up a lot of space in the pocket, and it does what I need to do. Okay, it's a bright enough light for just general light purposes. And that rides up front right there next to that. Boom. Pen. Pen is mightier than sword to a point. Okay, I do a lot of paperwork at work, 4473s all day long, working in a gun shop, signing those checks for those big money moves. You got to have a pen. Also, a pen, no matter what it's made out of, preferably something metal, but a pen in and of itself, if you know where to poke it, it's a good tool to have. Okay, and you can take this anywhere. In a courtroom, on a plane, in a school, wherever. It's just a pen, right? Until it's not. You are the weapon. Over here, same pocket. It's mirrored. But over here, we have uh, the Bastinelli Picor. So this is an awesome little fighting-type knife. This is a get-off-me knife. I carry this. And, you know, weapon retention or whatever. I'm on the ground rolling with somebody. I got something. It's quick. It's small. It's got a little bit of a knuckle to it. So I could use that as a little knuckle duster. Or it's going to add a little bit more to the punch. And then I got that to follow it up with. It's a razor sharp edge. And uh, it's super pointy. And I don't use this for anything other than bad guys. And since I haven't had to cut a bad guy yet with it, it's razor sharp. And that rides in like a little ulti clip kind of thing, Kydex sheath. And this will clip onto your underoos. It'll clip onto whatever you want. Front right pocket, slide it in there. Ulti clip, boom. Doesn't go anywhere. I could grab it whenever I want, however I want, and I like it. It works, and it's super fun to play with. Main pocket knife, Microtech LUDT, large underwater demolition team, uh, awesome knife for EDC. You could also push this into a tactical defensive role. It's an auto. Um, it's never going to be good as a fixed blade for defense, but I would not want to get cut by this. This is a nice knife. It's got a good action. It's fun to play with, and uh, it's just old reliable. This knife actually does have an NSN number, national stock number, because it has been or could be issued to, you know, military personnel. Now, you guys want to talk about the gun. Boom. Smith & Wesson 642 38 Special. These are some Underwood loads. Actually, these are Winchester. These are Winchester Rangers I got in here. Um, the best, the best. 38 special plus P carry load in existence. And then, of course, you guys all know what that's riding in. Awesome gun. Wheel gun still getting it done. Hogue mono grips on it. Full three finger purchase on there. I could get nice and high on that gun. Control recoil. Shoot it really, really nice. This is the Harry's Holster Icon in Multicam Black. You're not going to get one in Multicam Black, uh, so be jealous. But you should get just an all black one. It is the best appendix rig for a Smith & Wesson J frame. Known to man, hands down, bar none. And I carry that up front appendix. It's super easy. Goes right on. Clips over the belt. This is a Core Essentials belt. Um, super comfortable adjustments. It's stiff enough to hold up the pants and all the extra gear that I have. Supports the gun perfectly fine. All right, so that's a five-shot gun. Got to reload. So I got ten shots total on my person. But that's fine because I got my bag with me. I always got my bag with me. And I got something else in the bag. I got a lot of else in the bag. So we're going to check that out. But what else do I got? Flashlight. Main flashlight. I've been using this. This is the Thrunite T2. I've been using this because it's rechargeable. And it does everything I need to do. So this is basically my fighting light. I don't necessarily like the operation of this light with the push button here. I prefer a tail cap switch like on a Surefire or something like that. A Streamlight. And... Uh, it is what it is, but since I'm EDCing this and I do have a tendency to use it for certain things from time to time, I like the fact that it's rechargeable as opposed to having to keep buying batteries and swapping them out. This I could just plug in. It takes the same charger as my phone. It's a USB Type-C, so I always have one, and I could just keep it topped off at any moment. And this thing is a freaking lightsaber. Uh, 
this is awesome it's very disorienting that strobe 35 3700 lumens awesome little searchlight awesome little super bright light and again the fact that it's rechargeable helps out a lot take a little beer break here wet the old whistle that's good that is good stuff right there you guys saw me use it to pop the the, the uh the top on the beer bic lighter could be a zippo could be any type of lighter starting fire important thing i don't smoke cigarettes occasionally i will smoke a cigar but a lighter a lighter is an important thing fire you cannot survive without fire you got to boil water to purify you got to cook your food you got to stay warm whatever fire also keeps animals away builds morale fire very important fire cordage something to cut with okay these are edc tools stuff that i use on a daily basis opening the mail opening packages string off the shirt whatever sometimes i use a knife for things i shouldn't be using a knife for like a screwdriver whatever it is but it's a tool i also could turn it into something people call a weapon even though i am the weapon but i could do that if need be this thing is razor sharp i keep it razor sharp it's got a good point a good belly i got a good grip on it it's a good size it's a strong well-made knife and it's quick because it's an auto it's a microtech okay awesome worth the money spend the money buy once cry once but anyway simple little stuff what else do i got in there keys of course keys i got more cordage on the keys for one this helps pull it out of the pocket a little bit easier and i have two sets of keys so this helps differentiate if that's a word for my other keys car keys all the other keys car keys still have a light on them this is a micro usb rechargeable olight made in china china although so is through night so don't let me be a hypocrite but this is actually a pretty sick little light i forget exactly how many lumens it is but it's a little twisty boy and for a keychain light it's impressive even for like a handheld little pocket light it's pretty impressive i think it's a at least a couple hundred lumens or something like that usb rechargeable don't have to worry about it so that's a backup light i use that light for anything i need lights for boom backup gun Black 17 Gen 5. Better watch out, dude. That thing's loaded. Better watch out. But anyway, screwdriver. Shout out Dale Hayes for giving me this because I use this thing all the time. This thing is awesome. It's just a little flathead. You could do whatever you need to do. Pop a paint lid, you know, pop a beer with it, screw some stuff in, screw some stuff out. Might even screw around a little bit. Who knows? Um, but super handy. You could use it as etching or scraping. Awesome little tool on the keychain another olight okay these little free little olights that they give you another little twisty boy okay this one takes a triple a it's not rechargeable but a triple a is more than common enough it's also copper so it shows a nice patina on there you use it no two will end up alike and then of course per usual uh excuse me guys that's from this not because i'm rude i can be rude but it is because of this speaking of this Yeah, that's the good stuff. So, also shout out Jeff. Thank you. But, classic Vitorinox SD. What do we got? We got a pen blade. We got a nail file. A mini flathead. Toothpick. We had some tweezers. And then we do have some spring-loaded scissors. Which this is great for clipping little whiskers. Try not to do that as much as possible. But sometimes you got that little stray, it's just sticking out. You gotta take care of them. So keys, car keys, both of them have lights. So I got that, I got this, which is my standard EDC go-to light, and then I have my fighting light. So I carry four lights with me every single day and they're all in varying power, but they're all in, they're either rechargeable or take common batteries. I would consider a common battery, a AAA, a AA, or a CR123, and even at this point an 18650. What else would be in my right pocket where I keep the Microtech? This is where I put my main folder, my main EDC folder, or my main fighting folder, whatever. It's going to be the front right pocket. What also rides in that is my phone. It's a Galaxy S20. That's what I'm recording on. So obviously you guys are not going to be able to see it. Back right, that's where I keep the reload for the revolver. Got nothing in the right cargo short. The light 
is clipped on to the left cargo short. That's my main fighting light. And then in the back left pocket, try and rob me. I got my little handy dandy notepad. Got my SOE, shout out SOE wallet with Boba Fett patch. Got stuff in there. No friggin' money. Look at the money I got in here. Boom. This is why you guys got to like and share and comment and subscribe and shop with the affiliate links in the link tree down below. This is all I got, people. I got guns to buy. <laughs> but all joking aside, what do you know about that? Fits in your wallet. Useful. We can measure stuff. We can start fires without any type of freaking fire starting stuff, even though that's a fire starting thing in and of itself. But we could do it the old fashioned way. Handy. Why not? Takes up no space, no weight. I'm always wearing Solomon shoes. Um, I don't know what else. Sometimes I'll carry two guns. Sometimes I'll, I've carried three guns. Most of the time I don't, though. I should probably do this. Mid video. Boom. Boom. And we're back. Nice. We're back. Probably not even going to edit that out because we're raw and real here. We don't care how good the production value is because you suckers are going to watch anyway. I'm joking, but not really. <laughs> but I do appreciate all you guys. I love you guys. But anyway, so that's simple stuff. That's EDC, okay? Everyday carry. Like you guys might, and sometimes it's even more. Usually I have another fixed blade on me, like a K-Bar TDI or some other kind, uh, you know, a Bassinelli Red or whatever, some kind of fighting fixed blade that, because the, the best thing to fight with, as far as a knife is concerned, is a fixed blade. Folders are made to fold. One of these days they might fold on your fingers. Hurting yourself in a fight for your life would not behoove you. So... <laughs> There's that. Um, gun, typically, I carry other guns. I really do. Uh, but 90% of the time, I'm carrying this five-shot Smith & Wesson. This has been literally the best gun, um, hands down, old faithful, old reliable. You know you got five for sure. And uh, the double-action trigger is no big deal. Okay? You just got to learn how to roll that trigger back. You could even learn how to stage it, get right to that wall. Boom. But crack it, slap it, reload it, gun back in the fight. I mean, if you practice, I'm no Jerry Michalek, but because I use this tool as a serious life or death tool, uh, life and liberty tool, I put in my time, I put in my effort, I practice with it. And there's a lot of benefits over something like this to semi-autos, which is why I carry it. Um, and, and why I have my things set up the way that I do. Because this is on my body all the time, okay? A revolver does not go out of battery. A lot of fights end up on the ground. Most fights are more of a wrestling match than they are a boxing match. So, when you're tied up and you're wrestling with people and they're trying to kill you and you gotta hold off you know, a knife or a whatever, block your head from getting kicks to the back of it, a revolver, does not go out of battery. You could shove this into somebody and staple them up. A semi-automatic pistol, if you do that, the slide comes out of battery and is a safety mechanism so there's not an out of battery detonation which could blow up the gun, the gun will not fire. Fixed barrel design, revolver, doesn't matter. You could also shoot this from a pocket, from a hoodie, from a coat, because the revolver spins, yes, you gotta make sure that's clear, but you don't have to worry about a slide reciprocating. So this is a little bit more versatile depending on the application. Yes, you're extremely limited on rounds. You got five rounds before you got to break the gun in half and reload it. But you know what? Statistically speaking this and statistically speaking that, I get it. But five is probably good enough for your standard everyday civilian encounter. Especially if you have a reload, especially if you train those reloads, and especially if you train the draw stroke and being able to pull up and make those five shots that you have count. That's the most important thing. Indian, not the arrow, okay? You got to have good equipment that's going to work, but you need to know how to make it work. So that's the whole thing. I don't feel undergunned with a wheel gun of any variety, let alone, of all, a five-shot snub. I can shoot it. I can shoot headshots at 20, 25 yards on demand, and this is a double action only gun. I like the double action only gun 
because there's no hammer to snag. You're supposed to shoot a double action revolver in double action, so I don't need a hammer to cock it into single action because I could either stage that trigger or smoothly roll it straight to the back and stay on target and make my hits. Five for sure, light, organically shaped, conceals better than a, the semi-auto because they're all blocky and squared off lightweight you can get them in aluminum like this one you can get them in scandium which is just as light if not a little lighter and stronger they're also more expensive um, you can get them steel whatever you want you can get 38 357 22 magnum 22 long rifle 327 federal magnum whatever you want this is not a wheel gun wednesday video i'm actually filming this on a friday but uh, there are a benefit to it or there is a benefit to it carrying a wheel gun and especially when you got another gun on hand at all times. So that's where we're going to shake things up. We are going to flip the camera angle around because I'm sure you guys are sick and tired of looking at this. Some of y'all out there probably like it. Leave it in the comment section below. There's going to be zero comments. Ugly ass. <laughs> but we're going to flip it around. We're going to take a look at this and what's inside it and kind of my POU because all my ideas stink. <laughs> Stay tuned, guys. Also, I apologize for y'all having to watch this. All right. So we are here at the other tabletop. And I like this. I like this configuration. Got the nice flags in the background. Got a nice little tabletop. It's not the prettiest tabletop I've ever seen, but it's a decent tabletop. The tabletop works. Gets the job done. Forgot to mention, too in the other where did it go the ever ubiquitous chapstick okay that's this is that white label stuff right here this is uh limited edition only people that make big money moves can afford it this is that that high-end chapstick right there but chapstick while i'm jack jacking jesting joking who knows what the hell i'm doing um wounds fire starting chapped lips nobody likes that um, cheap, easy, light, takes up no space, throw it in your pocket. Um, and also to my vape. Okay. I'm addicted to nicotine cause I'm a fiend and I don't know how this perma molded itself on there, but that is a paster from shooting USPSA and, uh, it's like permanently attached to my vape now. So cool. It's fine. Uh, this is only my second, so I shouldn't be slurring any words or anything. While we go over all the fine, minute details of this bag. What are we looking at, first of all? Well, first of all, this is the Milspec Monkey Tactical Tailor Collaboration. In case you guys had trouble reading that. But I've had this pack for a good long while. And it's in like the Wolf Gray, Gray Man Gray, Sniper Gray, Fifty Shades of Gray, whatever the hell they want to call it. Um, this and foliage always looks the same uh, online. When you're looking at it, trying to buy it from the store, this and foliage always looks exactly the same. I don't know. But either way, um, I like the color. It is more subdued. It will blend in perfectly fine in an outdoor urban environment in a city as well as in the woods because it's, you know, rock colored. Uh, it's, oh, what's that shadowy stuff over there colored? It's, you know, could have a hint of green to it depending on the way the light hits it. Uh, it's just a good all-around color. It will show stains and stuff more, you know, from use. But I actually do use this stuff, and uh, I've used this for years. So, awesome pack. It can also bolt on to your plate carrier. Okay, you can get rid of the straps and stow them away, and then bolt this directly onto your plate carrier with these two clips. Um, it's hydration compatible. It's all types of different stuff. Uh, you got your hydration compatibility right there. I don't ever use it, but it's there. Not much in the way of shoulder pads. I mean, it's comfortable enough. It's enough for what you need for what I use this for, EDC pack. Um, you know, I'm one shouldering it to the car, to work, back to the car, back in the house. So it's really not that big of a de deal. I have worn this for extended periods of time and hiked some serious terrain wearing it, fully loaded. And it's not awful, but it's definitely no mystery ranch. It's not as comfortable. But again... I think this is primarily made to be adaptable for the t the Tactical Tailor Adapt Pack uh, for armor. So you could use this as a regular backpack, but you could also quickly convert it into a dedicated rig, you know, backpack, assault pack for your armor. So that's cool. 
you know, it's versatile, but again, I'm just using it as a backpack. You got Molly all on the outside. Obviously, you could bolt on whatever tactical nonsense that you want. I just got a little carabiner here. It's not lacking. It's or it's not locking. It's not load bearing. But if I need to attach some other packs or any other type of stuff, not bad to have. Cinch cord. I think I've stuffed a jacket in here all of one times, maybe. Whatever. Patch panel. Cool guy patch. America. Fuck yeah. Here to save the motherfucking day. Yeah. Here we go. What do we got here? Boom. So, this is a bitch-made knife. Can't even get it out of there. This is a bitch-made knife. I do not like Benchmade. They're cutting up guns for the jackbooted thugs for no reason. Cucking for that thin blue line. But, they do make decent products. And this was a gift. Not going to turn down a gift. And it's a useful tool. So, this is like their little seatbelt cutter thing. I keep it on the outside of the pack. Because if I did need to use it for its an intended purpose, then boom, I get into a car rack. I always have this up front with me in the truck. I could grab it, extract it, cut myself out of a rack, out of a seat belt, whatever. If you had to, you could also use this as a little knuck. You could use it as an impact device, whatever. If you can get somebody in there and hook them with something, I don't know, you gut hook the shit out of somebody. But that's why. I don't I don't like Benchmade. I don't support Benchmade. But these things are relatively cheap and it's honestly a good tool. And while it looks tactical being bolted on to the outside of the pack, whatever, and it might draw attention, I mean, it is what it is. It's a useful thing. I want to have access to it immediately. On the other side, Molly, but there's nothing in there. So, outside of the bag. Okay, I got my EDC. I got my Snubby, right? All day, every day. But, I also keep a gun in the bag. So I always have at least two guns. I always have at least two guns on me. Um, and I consider this on me. While it is off body carry, it's with me every single day. It's never less, or it's never more than like a hundred yards away from me. And, uh, most of the time it's a lot closer than that. Um, a couple of feet or literally right next to me or on my body. So I consider it being armed, having that, even if I just had the gun in the pack. What gun do I keep in the pack, you ask? Let me show you. Should I do like a super dramatic unveiling? Do you guys know what it is? Is my battery about to die? Oh. Alright, so that was super lame. But, it is indeed the FN57. Okay, I keep the FN57 in there. I got the standard blue tips. I got two 20-round mags full of this, and then I also have a 20-round mag. This is the 20-round mag of green tips, just in case the blue tips ain't getting it, getting it done. I'm carrying this. It also has the TLR9 Flex on there. Typically, I keep it locked out when I'm in the bag, so I'll have to swish, swish, swap. Jesus, I need to take an English class. But <laughs> I keep it turned off in the bag so it doesn't just burn a hole in my bag and start everything on fire by accidentally getting turned on. Uh, the actuation levers on the TLR9 Flex are actually pretty good, pretty positive, and uh, a lot better at not getting snagged and ND'd as far as the light is concerned, like the old toggle system. So I like this a lot, and it helps out in the bag, but you still have this convenient, easy little lockout feature where you could just twist it over, and then boom, it's locked out. So it's a quick little, if I was in a thing... And I had to go, it's no big deal, but in the meantime, it's a safety feature, so I don't start on fire and waste a battery when I might actually really need the battery. But, FN57, for one, nice full-size fighting gun. It's going to be easy to shoot. It's got a good trigger. It's got good sights on there. I've got the light so I can fight at night. That's right. Poet didn't even know it. I'm going to show it. Ergonomics, solid. Really pointable gun, really shootable gun. I shoot this gun really well plus high capacity. So 20 plus one, and then 20 round mags as reloads. You can get even bigger mags than that, or mag extensions. I don't trust the aftermarket stuff. I'm sticking with the factory 20s for serious game time use. But what does this give me? Light recoil, high capacity, and being able to shoot at distance. I'm considering this a PDW in the role that it's playing for me. This, I can reach out and touch you at 100, 150, even 200 yards if I do my part. The cartridge shoots that flat. 
That being said, there's a drop off in ballistics, 110%. How much damage are you doing when it gets there? But my whole thing is if you got a rifle and I don't, this I can have with me everywhere all the time. I got enough capacity. I could lay down suppressive fire and keep your head down at 100, 150 yards with this. And I'm telling you what, even at that distance, I would not stand in front of a 5.7. And uh, it'll give me the opportunity I need to stop the fight, get out of the fight, whatever, you know, until backup comes. But I, I shoot this gun really well. I've got some good ammo for it. It's dialed in. It's light recoiling. It will go through 3A or less level body armor. Now, a lot of bad guys wear body armor. Us good guys are not the only people that have body armor or utilize body armor. You lose fights by underestimating your opponent. Stop thinking the bad guys aren't out there training to kill you. Not everybody is just your random fly-by-night cat burglar. Okay, There's some dudes out there training just as hard, if not harder, than you are. And they got all the same equipment. All right, Think about it. So, and plus on top of it, the ammo's light, the gun is light, especially for how large it is, and I'm carrying it in this Vertex Tactigami. So you actually fold this stuff up, it's Velcro-backed in the bag, and then this Tactigami stuff is Velcro-backed, and you can mold it to shape whatever gun with or without light, any mag. You know, I could just pull this mag out, boom. But it holds in there, these are the blue tips, let me get those green tips out. A little bit of a flex. Oh, Jesus. This is not looking good. That could have got me killed. How dare I? Maybe I didn't load that one good enough. But there's the green tips, blue tips. Got all types of good colors going on right there. So there's that. But that's how I keep it. That's I got the two mags. Mag in the gun. There's the gun with the light in the holster. The gun goes in there real nice. Holds it no matter which way I go, you know, up, down, left, right, shaking around. And then if I need to draw it, it's right there. Boom. It doesn't hang up on anything. It's definitely more fumbly bumbly reaching into a pack and doing this than just clearing a garment from your waistband. But I have it with me. And this gives me far more capabilities than something like my snub nose does. And I feel good enough with my snub nose every day for what I do working in a gun shop. I got other guns I could grab. But this gives me opportunities that I would not have with a standard caliber, even like 9mm, 45, 40, even 357 SIG. So I can reach out and touch it with this, and I could go through armor. Not a bad idea. Awesome gun, shoots really nice. I can't complain. And it carries perfectly inside the bag. Gun guy ASMR. I'm going to start a B channel and do nothing but that. Just unzip and zip tactical backpacks. You guys will be able to tell the brand by how the zipper sounds. Yeah, those are the things that go down inside my head, people. It's a scary place. You don't want to be in there. So, here we go. Check this out. So, it's one big pocket. Here is just some randomly tossed in there. A couple spare speed loaders for the snub nose. If it got that bad where I'm out of 10 shots at 38 Special and I got to the bag and I wasn't grabbing the 5.7 for whatever reason or I had to arm someone else, here, boom, here's a couple reloads, here's a gun. Not a bad idea. I'm going to carry it with me. I could carry this off my belt. I could carry this off my belt like that, but it's very bulky. It sticks out a lot further than like a magazine pouch would or something like that. And uh, I don't know. It would be quicker, but I just keep it loose in the bag. Probably not going to be able to dig it out when I actually need it. Um, got sunburnt recently shooting competitions, so that's why this is in here, because I'm a little baby back bitch, and my skin hurts, so we got that. Bandana. For one, fuck a mask, because I never once wore a mask for a scamdemic. Um, but, if you had to wear a mask to conceal your identity, this looks pretty cute. Uh, also, you know, dust particles, whatever, um... You know, just regular mask purposes, not because of stupid made-up diseases that aren't really made up, but they were made up in a laboratory by the government so they could completely and totally gain more control over you and make you give up your rights in fear. 
for a little bit of promised security that never comes. Okay, so probably going to be thoroughly demonetized and shadow banned for drop little truth nuggets, but this has a million and one purposes, filtering water, wound care, cleanup, wiping your hands down, you know, how do you make a, a handkerchief, da handkerchief dance, put a little boogie in it, you know, all types of stupid dad jokes can be performed with this item right here, but it's just a solid thing, like this, this or a shamog or whatever, it, I mean, it's worth its weight in gold when you need something like this, so have it. No, basically is free, I'm sure you can get one of these for free somewhere, um, doesn't weigh nothing, doesn't take up no space, so simple, easy stuff, people. I got armor. I run armor, soft armor in this pack. So every single day of my life, I have armor with me. I can wear it on my back while I'm running away scared. I can flip around, wear it on my chest as an improvised frontal, you know, protected body armor area. I could use it as a shield, protect like that. But either way, I have 3A. So this will stop like a 12 gauge shotgun with buckshot or a slug at certain distance. It'll stop up to a 44 Magnum. Um, all this stuff is faded, but it's definitely in spec. It's good. It hasn't been wet. You know, it gets a little bent here and there from being in the bag, but it's perfectly fine. I trust my life to it. Super cheap. You can get stuff like that. It's like from Botac Tactical. I don't know exactly what brand it is, but it's NIJ certified or whatever the heck. So... Boom, in case you do take one, this is right behind the armor, conveniently, although it probably shouldn't be there. I guess anything in that backpack, if that took a round, it would mess it up, so I guess we're taking our chances, but chest seal, hyphen chest seal. You can improvise these if you know what you're doing, but it's much better to just have the actual real one. Okay, keep that behind the armor. What else we got in here? Vape juice, you guys are sleeping. If you guys are vaping... Nick Saltz, and you're not messing with the Berg. I don't know if this is just like an Illinois thing or whatever, or if you can get this online, but this shit is fire, my dude. Fire. So there's that. Boom. Medical. Super important. Medical is, you're more likely to use this a million times over than you are likely to pull and use a firearm in a defensive or offensive situation, depending on the situation. Situation always dictates the tactics, but you're more likely to plug a hole than put a hole. So, and even just normal everyday stuff, this is a little one to two person first aid kit, and literally when you buy it, it comes as a first aid kit, but then I've also added to it, oh crap, Ugh. So I've added to it, I've got more than regular just first aid stuff, I've got a little compass, some tweezers, some medical tape, neosporin, bandages, whatever, um, eye drops, same thing with the dusty stuff, like with 9-11 type of stuff, if you get a lot of stuff in your eyes and you have nothing to rinse it out with, eye drops, rotos are definitely the best, <laughs> rotos dude, there's going to be a couple of y'all out in the comments I'm sure. Hand sanitizer, more medical bandages, this is a SWAT T tourniquet, not the best, but super affordable, super intuitive, and easy to use, and this might save your life. Camp soap, more bandages, little stuff. You know, nothing crazy, nothing crazy. This is, again, above and beyond uh, a true standard first aid kit. Sorry, I'm all out of frame, guys. Uh, but I got, I got first aid boo-boo stuff, and then I even got a little bit higher end, more, you know, combat style stuff with the tourniquet, trauma, whatever. And that's just the basic first aid kit, okay? This is boo-boos, this is somebody fell and scraped their knee, boom, I got you fam. What else we got? Little Maxpedition pouches. Since this bag is completely and totally just one big pocket basically you do have your bladder section back here you could hang a bladder and then you do have little side pockets um, on the side but other than that it's just one big pocket so we're going to show you all the little individual organizationals that i have in here um, a lot of this stuff is exactly the same as it was before so if you guys have seen some of the other videos you guys will already have seen most of this kit in there and the way that it's set up because i usually find something that works and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So it is what it is. But this is my electronics pouch. Got a little pen back here for no reason. A uh, couple portable rechargers. This is a portable recharger. And actually all of these are except for these are just lights and chargers. This is a light, a charger, and a hand warmer. And this thing works excellently. This is the Zippo thing. And uh, if you're a hunter, if you're outside in the cold a lot, whatever, this thing is worth its weight in gold. 
charges, it's a light, and it's an awesome hand warmer. And obviously it's rechargeable, so it'll last you forever. And then I also, behind there, I got cords, you know, headphones, chargers for the phone, the vape, whatever. Um, but I always got that on me, so in case I don't have a socket to plug into, I can power my devices at least one or two times to full capacity and hopefully I'm able to readjust my situation or get myself out of that situation and make it happen. I don't know. Who knows? Here, little cheesy 511 Tim Kennedy Cucky admin pouch, lighter in there, fire starter, another bandana, different color, the color of distress. Or that's orange, I guess. But, you know, same thing. It's going to stand out in, in a wooded environment. Rick Hinder Investigator Pen. Okay, this is awesome. You could use it as self-defense. It's also a great writing utensil. Uh, some strike anywhere and weatherproof matches. Pencil, because I can sharpen this with a knife and keep writing. And then a write in the rain. So, simple little stuff. This is just a little, you know camp tasky type of stuff you know if i needed to write something down i got into an accident or whatever i had to give a girl my phone number or whatever the hell i got to do pen and paper is invaluable um or extremely valuable I, w I, I don't know how i guess that would be the way to put it i don't know either way guys but just little stuff like that do i need to dedicate a whole pouch to a paper pencil a couple matches and a nice fancy pen. No, but I had the pouch. This is probably better served somewhere else, but it matches the bag and it's going in there. So it keeps my stuff. Plus I could always throw some other crap in there, whatever. Boom. Links Defense. Check them out. Awesome company. Made in America. Solid quality kit. This is the ankle med kit they sent out. To me. I either wear this when I have pants on or I throw it in the bag when I have shorts on. Either way, this has all of my medical stuff. There's another SWAT T with some duct tape wrapped around a credit card. Here is a needle for tension pneumothorax. Okay, a sucking chest wound. I got a bunch of stuff. More duct tape, gloves, Sharpie to write T when I apply a tourniquet. Medical bandages. Uh, another tourniquet. I'm pretty sure there's a rats in here. Either way, this is my combat stuff. I've got other supplemental combat stuff as well as just regular boo-boo stuff. And between this, this is more medical than most people have in their house, let alone carry on their person. So buy some medical. It's not the most fun thing. It's not super high speed and low drag. But I tell you what, when you got a bullet in your ass, you're going to appreciate that you got that. And you're going to appreciate that you or somebody around you knows how to use it. Okay. This really is a freaking nut and fancy video. It's 40 minutes long. I cannot believe that you guys are sticking around for this. All right. So, mechanics gloves. Gloves, super useful thing. Working on the truck, fighting, whatever. Running an AK. It's hot. It's sharp. Whatever you got to do. You're cutting down a tree, chopping up wood. You don't want to get blisters. You don't keep yourself warm. Whatever. Gloves, mechanics gloves I like. They work for running guns, for doing work, for doing car stuff. They're cheap. You can find them anywhere. If they wear out, get another pair. Big deal. That's in the one side pocket. Other side pocket, boom, pocket sword. Cold Steeler, Cold Steeler, Cold Steel Voyager XL. Uh, this is the Bowie or the Bowie. Uh, this is a fighting folder, a survival folder. This is a pocket sword. Uh, one of my favorite knives because it's just so good all the way around. Super sturdy and like I would trust this. I have this in here. I have a fixed blade in here, but I also have this. And this could be used to baton or to chop wood or to survive, to fight, whatever you need to do. The triad locking system is one of the best in the world. Super sturdy design, really high quality stuff. And uh, if I ever forget my pocket knife at home, I got this in the bag. I could clip to the pocket. It actually carries really well for being a super huge, freakishly large blade. Um, but it gives you a lot of capability. A lot of capability so I got that it doesn't weigh that much but uh, it holds weight in performance this thing is worth every ounce you know on the side of a hill up a mountain because this will get you by this will function as a folder as a fixed blade for all intensive purposes generally speaking but cold steel products definitely definitely recommend them it's kind of cheesy their videos are kind of cheesy nobody likes Lynn Thompson whatever I think he's kind of funny and he supports the Second Amendment wholeheartedly so I can get behind that any day of the week. But Cold Steel, man, best bang for the buck as far as cutlery is concerned. 
And then, boom, I got a little Kimber Pepper Blaster just for funsies in case somebody wants to get that smoke. You know, it's nice to have options. Not every single time do you have to shoot somebody, knife somebody, even punch somebody. If you can pepper spray them and it stops or they leave you alone, then boom, you won. Nobody's seriously hurt. That person gets to go home that night and rethink their decisions. So, either way. But, know how to use that other stuff. Be prepared to use that other stuff. Try not to have to use that other stuff. Anyway. Magpul, I think this is their newer line, the AGR, whatever. I could bolt this to whatever else I want. It's got the Molly clips. Actually, I could probably use these for something very important. Um, good thing I'm doing this video and I just remembered that I have little stupid crap like this bolted onto other little stupid crap that I could be using this stuff for. And then it just sits here on the other stupid crap. But boom, this is like my, my tools pouch. What do we got in here? Well, we got a space blanket and a tarp inside here i keep the local laws for my state as far as guns are concerned a little bit of duct tape around a credit card super useful space blanket really nice i like how this clamshells i got the moral moral light my fire so this is my fixed blade now again this is a rat tail style fixed blade so it's not a full tang but i can start a fire with it it is super razor sharp and uh, they're super inexpensive and it can be fought with, it can do camp tasks and feather sticks and build fires and you can survive. They're super lightweight, comes with a decent little sheath, you know, for the price, whatever. You should have like 10 of them. Here, what else we got? Some go juice for when you gotta go. You never know, might be in the middle of the boog, might have to re-lube a rifle or something. Gerber Compact Sport 400 as the multi-tool. This is the NSN numbered issued out to troops one um, with the out the front pliers. And then you also have, you know, your other tools and stuff that are locking, which is nice. And it is a nice size as nothing fancy would call it. It's a medium duty multi-tool, I guess, or it could be pushed into the role of a heavy duty multi-tool. HDMT or whatever the fuck acronym ass. But yeah. I like these. These are cool. I haven't seen these around in a while, and I'm more of a Leatherman guy anyway, but these are cool and it's useful. We got this little pry bar. This is the Gerber pry Brid. Do you see what they did there? Do you see what they did there? But I like this because, boom, anything you need cutting that this can cut, it will cut. And these blades are super cheap. They're replaceable. Saves the edge on your more important blades for survival or fighting. And uh, it's just a useful tool. A little built-in rope cutter for the 550 cord. Again, back to that. Survival. Snip it off. Do what you got to do. Nice G10. You could even use this as, a, as an impact device or a little wedge somebody's cranium open with that. That would not feel good. A little morale booster. Or in those desperate situations where people don't know how to cook. Could be your mama, could be your girlfriend, could be your great auntie, your grandmama. But you got to have a little bit of this laying around just in case. Let's give her a good little shake. Good little shake right there. Mm. I know it's not Frank's, but I do put this hot sauce shit on everything. I really do. I love hot sauce. Eggs, chicken, cereal. You got some batteries. Lithium, especially if you're going to be storing them long term. These are CR123As. They go with my flashlight. Speaking of which, I got a Surefire G2X Tactical that I keep in this uh, bag as well. But that is actually on my dresser because I need to put new batteries in it. And I was looking for more batteries. I don't want to take out of there. I'm going to go buy some if I don't have any, you know, ones that aren't dedicated to a kit laying around. Um... But it's a little 300 or 600 G2X Tactical. Excellent light for the money. And that stays with the bag. So even though I got four or five lights on my person at any given moment, I also have spare stuff in the bag. Knives, tools, medical, ammo, a whole ass another gun, body armor, more medical, different little tools, sunburn. Because I look like a freaking lobster. And uh, I have the fairest skin complexion of them all, apparently. But... It is what it is. There's different stuff. Sometimes I carry, you know, K-Bar, TDI. I carry this a lot, uh, but sometimes depending on the gun I'm wearing and where I'm wearing the gun, where I like to wear this interferes. Every now and then, I'll clip this to the pocket. This is a Leatherman Wingman. Excellent multi-tool. 
for the money, spring-loaded pliers, bunch of different tools and stuff on it. I think you can get these for less than 30 bucks, and it's definitely far better than any of the Gerber variants that you can get for around the same price. Uh, also, sometimes this rides in the pack with me, or I'll toss it in the truck. There's nothing wrong with, actually, here's my Surefire right here, boom. Surefire EDC L-2-T-whatever other acronyms they want. But this is an awesome light. This is 1200 lumens, and it needs batteries. It needs some batteries in there. So a couple other little honorable mentions. I have been known to carry this open L loose in the pocket. That is uh, quite a nice little cutting blade. I guess all blades are cutting blades, ain't they? But uh, like a little, you know, apple, slicing apple. String off the shirt, nice little slow going gentleman style folder, some old history and heritage bringing it back to the olden times, trapping beavers. I guess a lot of guys these days are still out there trapping beavers, or at least trying. There's that. This is actually from France. It was gifted to me from somebody that visited and bought it right out of the factory. Victorinox forget which one this one is, but it's like the slightly thicker model that has some more tools. I'm sure you guys will leave it in the comment section below. Little Gerber dime. This thing is excellent. All these things rotate in and out of my pockets, and these are just what's laying here that, you know, I pulled out. It's on like a little dump tray. Um, carry different Microtex. Carry different cold steels. Uh, I was carrying the Spyderco Maximet, but you guys saw what happened to that. But either way, this is a freaking 50-minute long video almost. I cannot believe that. I don't honestly believe that any of y'all are still here. And if you are, God bless you. Because somebody needs to bless you. Because obviously he put a little too many chromosomes in your mix when he made you. If you're still here. <laughs> I appreciate it though. I love it though, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Um, everybody, and I say everybody, a couple of people have been asking about EDC updates. So it was a long day at work. I was going to lay down in bed. But instead, I'm here hanging out with you guys. Only two beers in, though, so that's no fun. But here it is on body and in the backpack pretty much. There's more stuff I keep in the truck. The guns change sometimes from day to day or, you know, a couple times a month. I'll carry a different gun, different knives, different tools, sometimes even different whole setups and kits and bags and whatever. But for the most part, this is my go-to standard stuff that I feel comfortable with that works well for me. Hasn't changed much. A couple little new different things, but it is what it is, guys. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think, if you like content like this. And furthermore... Most importantly, first three links in the description box below. Check them out. Those are to help you fight for your God-given inalienable gun rights, which are constantly under attack and forever important. And make sure you guys do that. Make sure you are prepared. Make sure you got beans, bullets, and band-aids, and you know how to use them. That being said, furthermore, if you love what we do here, because if you made it this far, you sure as hell do, <laughs> smash the like button, share the video, comment down below, ring the notification bell, make sure you're subscribed and that you stay subscribed. YouTube's been known for unsubscribing people lately, unfortunately, but it is the way that it is. And furthermore, if you want to help me out, just say what's up. Participate in the channel, join us on the live chats. You can check the link tree, the Etsy shop, whatever. But uh, just watch the videos, man. That's what they're made for. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Ha, <laughs>